so full of believing that it will come out in his saying, in his praying. It'll come out in his confession. It'll come out in his asking. It'll come out in his seeking. It'll come out in his knocking. That's praying. Everybody say, I'm a prayer warrior. You can pray over your children, and right now it may not look like it's working, but it's going to work in Jesus' name. Oh, let's give God a crazy praise. When you start praying, stop looking at the person that you're praying for and just know God's going to make a way. Come on, somebody say amen. You can already be in heaven and that prayer is still activated. Prayer is still working. Some people say, you know, I'm worried about the country. I believe our founding fathers got together and did some praying and ladies and gentlemen, I believe that thing's going to stay a little bit because of that praying. I believe some of this mess is going to come down because there's some praying. I still believe in one nation under God. Somebody help me out just a little bit. I believe in the power of prayer. In Jesus' name. And I want you to know that we are a praying people. We're a praying couple. We've got praying here at the church. And our prayers are going to stick to you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody help me. In Jesus' name. It will protect you. It will guide you. Hallelujah. While you're praying, God will visit with you about the person. He'll talk to you. He'll bless you in Jesus' name. So let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let's go back to this scripture that we've been using over and over again because prayer is birthed out of the spirit of faith. Out of the spirit of faith. I pray over my body every day. I pray over your body. Come on. So when you get a bad report, you need to say, well, prayer is going to stick to me more than this bed. We've got to get back to believing like never before in the power of prayer. Am y'all with me? Say amen. So let's take this scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 13. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, I believed, and I have spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. Amen. All praying is, is saying. I'm going to throw it to you. All, all praying is, is saying. Let's say it together. Praying is saying. If you know how to talk, you know how to pray. Come on now, somebody help me. I don't know what to say to the Lord. All you got to do is say what you believe. Lord, I believe I'm more. Than, how many know you're more than a conqueror? Pray it. How many believe you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you? Pray it. Say it is praying it. Saying it is praying it. Because when you're praying, you talk to God. I can say it to you. I can say it to my wife. I can say it to myself. But my saying when I talk to God is praying. I want you to hear me. My saying is praying when I talk to God. And out of my believer, I've got something to pray about. Because I believe in the promises of God that they're yes and amen to the glory of God. I believe that all the promises are yes and amen to the glory of God. I believe He can do exceedingly, abundantly above all that I can ask or think. But I've got to be asking because praying is saying and saying is asking and that's all praying in Jesus' name. I have not because I prayed not. Are y'all with me? You can pray over somebody that's totally disobedient, totally out of line in your family. Quit worrying about them and pray for them. Tell the Lord, I'm not going to worry about them no more. I'm going to pray over them in the name of Jesus. Set yourself to pray over them and believe that you're praying exactly what's going to happen. Praying is not witchcraft. It's believing in the Word of God. 
When people try to control you and direct you the wrong way, that's witchcraft. But praying is not witchcraft, it's God's kind of craft. If you love me, say amen. Let's stay in this just a little while. So let's go, if you want to go with me, to the book of James, chapter 5. James, mm, oh, well, I, we're going to 1 Thessalonians 5. Mm. Hallelujah, listen to this. Go back up there, come on, come on. It's okay. Pray without ceasing. Have you heard that scripture? Well, I remember reading that a long time ago, and I said, how can that be? How can I mow a yard and pray? How can I paint a house and pray? How can I do what I do and pray? Because praying has nothing to do with that. Praying is spiritual power. Yes, it is. It's my believer kicking in. Yes. I, I, walking by faith is walking as a believer. Right. Walking in the spirit is walking as a believer. And so I get in that believer going, and I'm just going to be talking to God. I, 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 Fonda says to me sometimes, baby, you've been praying all day long. She just said to me, baby, you've been praying all day long. Pray without ceasing. Everybody say it with me. Pray without ceasing. What it does is you're keeping a constant flow of the miraculous. You've got to believe this. You're keeping a constant flow of the miraculous around everything that you love. Come on. You're keeping something happening all the time. Pray without ceasing. Say it with me. Pray without ceasing because you believe without ceasing. Once you believe without ceasing, you believe no matter what anybody says. If somebody says something and you stop believing, you stop believing based upon what they said. You can't pray without ceasing. If you believe without ceasing, you can pray with. I'm going to say it again. If you can believe without ceasing, you can pray without ceasing. Because it comes from believing. I believe. I believe in Jesus' name. Amen. I've had people in the church come tell me what they're going to do. And, and boy, I'd, I'd be praying and, and praying for them. And I knew that that's what they didn't need to do. And Fonda will tell you, I go through the struggle of should I talk to them or not? Should I tell them? Should I tell them what I believe the Lord's saying? Not to control them, but to keep them from danger. Prayer keeps your family from danger. Are you listening to me? Prayer keeps it from danger. Prayer gives you the words to say. When you talk to God, you got something to tell the people. When you've been talking to God, you got something to tell yourself. Amen. Pray without ceasing. How did I know when I go to the hospital and I tell somebody, you're going to get out of here in three days and everything's going to be all right because of praying. Praying. Prayer works. But it comes from believing. You can't, you can't pray off and on because if you do, you're off and on as a believer. If you're believing 24 hours a day, it's going to affect your saying 24 hours a day. Because you got something to say because you believe it. You got something to say. Fonda and I were down in the rabbi's tunnels in Jerusalem. And she handed me this piece of paper and she didn't want me to see it. And I didn't need to see it. She said, baby, put it up there on, inside the, 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 the tunnels that we're in. They're all, they're all the praying walls, the wailing walls, they call them. And we put it up there. And I've been praying because I'm alone this place. I've been praying and believing. And my believing kicked in when I put that praying up there, that prayer, without even knowing what the prayer request was. My believer kicked in. I patted my wife, and she turned around and looked at me. And, I, and we're four stories on the ground. And I looked at her and said, everything you put on that piece of paper will happen in the next 12 months. Guess what? It happened in the next 12 months. You see, if you're praying from your believing, your believing will receive the answer from your praying. If you have enough believing to do the praying, you've got enough believing to receive the answer. I'm throwing some stuff out there, but how many hear me in the name of Jesus? The same believing that does the praying is the same believing that does the receiving. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
Y'all love the Lord? So pray without ceasing. Let's say it together. Pray. And I remember when I first read that, I thought, oh, my God. Pray without ceasing. Oh, Lord. And I had to ask God, help me. Jesus ever lives to pray. He ever lives to intercede. He told Peter, I'm praying for you. Your faith failed you not. I'm praying for you that your faith failed you not. I'm praying for you that your faith fail you not. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You, you can believe it if you want to or not. But Jesus went back to Peter after he gave up. I'm going fishing. He gave up, left Jerusalem, went down to Galilee. He's out there in a boat. And what Jesus did, he'd been praying for him, and he knew the miracle to repeat to get Peter's attention. And the miracle was, cast your net. Have you got any fish? Peter said, I've told all night and caught nothing. He said, then you put your net on the other side of the boat. And he brought in 158 fishes. And when he gathered them together, here's the words that came out of my mouth. It is the Lord. Do you understand that? So in that, in that praying that Jesus did... He said, I tell you what Peter needs. He needs a repeat performance of a miracle that I've already given him before to encourage him to get back into this thing. I'm going to help his faith. I'm going to help his faith. The Lord, if you pray, he will always help your faith. Amen. Amen. And y'all love me. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith in my praying pleases God faith because believing all faith is is believing so my believing creates my asking my seeking my praying my talking and that continuously pleases God I'm going to tell you something God don't need any of you in heaven God don't need one of you in heaven he's already got a praise and worship established in heaven he don't need one of you in heaven he, brother, you stay down right here on the earth at his footstool and give him some glory and some praise. He'd love, brother, you be right down here. Come on, somebody say amen. Do you think that he'd want you in some coma in the hospital when you can't talk? When he says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Do you think that that's the condition he wants you in? Because he says pray without ceasing because something was able to shut you up and keep you quiet? No. You tell him, I want to pray without ceasing. I want my believer talking, my believer asking, my believer seeking, my believer praising God. Let's give him a crazy praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That's the power of this stuff. That's the power of this thing. Amen. Next scripture, please. Stay with me. Hallelujah to God. I thank God, whom I serve for my forefathers with a pure conscience. Here it is again. That without ceasing, I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. So I wouldn't know about praying without ceasing if the apostle Paul hadn't come along and gave it to me. He constantly in his writings tells me I can pray without ceasing. Amen. 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 And when something comes to disturb that pr prayer so that I will talk negative, that's really what the enemy wanted. Did you really know what he wanted was to stop your praying, which would quiet your believing? Stop your praying. Amen. And you build yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That praying produces a holy faith. Oh. And when something comes, you can say to it, I've already prayed about this. Try it with me. I've already prayed. I've already prayed with that boy. Come on, you already prayed over that boy. Hallelujah. If things going to be good, prayed over that boy. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Prayed over them kids. Prayed over Bailey Boo. Oh, my God. And she's going to sing in the choir. Now let's give Bailey a hand clap. She, she, 
they got this special choir that you got to try out for. Honors Choir. She did, and she got it. Yeah. Bailey, are y'all with me? Hallelujah. Oh, there's a Sunday coming. We're going to give her the microphone. I hope I get it back. Amen. <laughs> Praying is just saying from your believing. Praying isn't, no oh God, help. Praying is what you believe. How many of you believers say amen? You can pray yourself and get financial victory. You can pray yourself and get blessed at your job. You can pray over somebody that you love and keep it up and put it on them. Put it on them. And even if you don't see it, your prayer sticks to them like glue. You're in and you're out and you're in and you're out. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's keep going. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6, 18. Praying always. <laughs> Man. How much? Always. It's not like I was down on my knees and I spent all that time on my knees. No, you're just praying always. You're in a, your believer is always praying, <coughs> seeking, covering. Prayer is a covering. In the name of Jesus. Prayer is a... Do you think that we do all of our good on Sundays and Wednesday night? We do a whole lot of good during the week because we pray in the Word of God over you. And we're not edifying ourselves. I'm just telling you. Hallelujah. That's how I can look at you and say what this Word says. No weapon formed against you will prosper because we're praying for it in the name of Jesus. Other people are praying because if we fall in love with each other and we believe God together, then pray ye one for another that you may be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. And I read an article that says, you know, cancer is really hitting more people under the age of 50. So I've been praying more and more for everybody under 50. Lord, that cancer has got to stay away from them in the name of... Are you going to help me pray? Pray ye one for another that you may be healed. Let's give God a crazy praise. <laughs> There's certain things I believe because they were prayed into me. There's certain ways that I live because I prayed to live that way. I prayed from my believing to live that way. Now, y'all with me? Say amen. Let's keep going. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Or do you see it? It's a theme. It's a theme. That we're praying always. Do you want me to tell you what will protect this church? Praying always one for another. You know what will protect these kids growing up in a crazy world? Praying for them. Come on, somebody help me out. Amen. You know what will stop the curse in a family? Praying over the family. God said, I will not withhold anything that I'm going to do because I know Abraham will tell it to his kids. Do you understand? God wants generational blessings. God wants stuff to pass down. By now, there should be no poor people or better making it people in the church. Because it should be passing down believer to believer to believer to believer in the name of Jesus. We ought to be praying, Lord, let them be blessed. Lord, let them be more than a conqueror. Let it, let it be. Let it be in the name of Jesus. And it passes down in generation. But sometimes I think the church is as weak today as it ever was because we've skipped this part of it. Amen. Y'all love me? Well, let's don't let Victory Church skip it. How many of you went out to youth camp this year? Just let me see your hand at least. Did you see some crazy kids going wild for Jesus? Boy, you better keep praying over them in the name of Jesus. Because they're not at that crazy youth camp. They're at school or something. 
Come on. Day of school. God is good. You know, I'm thankful for them leaders that come out there every year and are like that. And they're not weak. They're stronger every year than they were the year before. Huh? Some of them are wild. I'm not going to point at anybody, but. Amen. It's not diminishing because they're prayed over. They're not diminishing because they're prayed over. Come on, lift your voice up and give God a crazy praise. Oh, my God. My son, Jonathan, was a halfback on a football team. I prayed over him that he would not get hurt. He was a starting halfback. We were playing a team, and we happened to be there, and it got hit so hard that it just about knocked him out on the ground. And so I got out of the stands and walked down there, and nobody stopped me because they couldn't. <laughs> and I went down there, and I got there as the ambulance was driving up to pick up our son and take him to the hospital. And the trainers and everybody said, he's blown his knee He'll never be able to play again. He'll have to have surgery. Well, there's thousands of people in the stands. I get down there, laid my hands on that knee in the name of Jesus out loud. And I prayed over his leg. And he was playing halfback again next Friday night. Amen. And when they took him into the hospital and x-rayed him, they said, why did y'all bring him here? There is nothing wrong. But you see, I'd already been praying. I didn't just start then. Some of you just, if you're not careful, we start when trouble starts. Instead of saying, no, I've been praying without ceasing. I got this thing covered in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your hand and give God a crazy prayer. I got this thing covered in the name of Jesus. That man, that woman, when they go to work, they ought to know they got them covered there in the name of Jesus. And no matter what goes on, they're covered there in the name of Jesus. Come on. This is why we pray, uh, we pray for each other. Pray ye one for. Oh, give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Let's keep going. Hallelujah. Luke 18, 1. And Jesus spake a parable to this end. Men ought to pray. Men ought to pray. Ought always to pray and not faint. So when you feel like whatever, giving up, giving in, giving out, don't. Pray. Everybody shout pray. pray. Now that takes a discipline. It's like when you get mad and you're going to stop it. You stop it. You stop it, because you're thoroughly furnished to every good work. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, you got to quit saying, God, can you take care of my temper? And say, God, I've been praying about it, and I can take care of it, because I can do all things through Christ. Yes, Are you with me? <laughs> that praying is so powerful that we don't have to quit. We don't have to give up. We don't. We don't have to quit. We don't have to fall apart. We can jump right into our praying, our saying from our believer. Let your believer do the talking. Come on, help me out. Let your believer do the talking. I'm going to say that one minute. Let your believer do your talking. For with the heart man believes and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Let's get ready to finish. Let's keep going. Hallelujah to God. This is the book of Revelation. I want you to listen to what happens and will happen to your praying. Okay? This is the book of Revelation. If Jesus is coming, how many of you believe he's coming, then this is happening. 
Revelation, I saw the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. Next verse. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book or to look therein. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look therein. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals. Mm. You ought to feel something right now. And I behold, lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, those are the seraphims, in the midst of the elders, 24 of them representing the church, stood a lamb, that's Jesus, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes. The seven horns are on the resurrected Jesus in that place which represents all power. Seven eyes represents all seeing and all knowing, perfection in power and perfection in seeing. Amen. This is the only time basically you'll see Jesus with the seven horns and the seven eyes, but this is him getting ready for all things new. Which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Mm. He came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. The elder did. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb. Having every one of them harps, listen carefully, and golden vials. Full of odors, that word there is literally incense, which are your prayers. Everybody say, my prayers. Every prayer you pray from believing is in heaven right now. I wish somebody would get a little bit happy. And before Jesus comes back to earth, he will literally have that opened up. Read your Bible. And he will smell in an incense, in a beautiful smell, all of our prayers that we prayed, and he'll come and get us. What is the last thing he does before he comes? Is smell the prayer. Isn't that right? Are y'all with me? That's how powerful your prayers are. Is he's got them. He's got them. Heaven keeps up with them. Heaven has a charge to keep them till Jesus comes. Mm. Let's stand together. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The Amplified says, if Sister Ashley was teaching this, she would use her Amplified, and it says, the continual heartfelt prayer of a righteous man makes a whole lot of power available, mighty in his working. Your prayer is effectual. Your prayer, you have to believe in the effectiveness of your praying. Your believer has to believe my prayer works come on now my praying works my praying is effective my praying is powerful my praying is mighty because my praying is is me saying out of my believing and talking to God my praying is for you to hear my praying is for the Lord to hear have y'all with me now, I'm going to say something to you, and I want you to understand me. 
I was a young preacher in Caldwell, Texas. And I went before God and I said, God, I think the devil's hearing me praying, hearing my words. He said, you have to understand how God sometimes talks to me. Are you crazy? <laughs> he cannot understand faith talk because it resists him and he can't stay around. The devil can't understand your praying because it comes from your believing. So he can't understand your believing and your praying. Come on, somebody say amen. So when you're down there praying over your mate and you think, oh, the devil heard them words, he's going to fight me now. He heard me. I've heard, I've heard preachers say it. Oh, the devil heard me praying. Now he's fighting my praying. No, he can't hear you praying. He don't even understand it. It's between you and God. Come on, somebody help me. It's between you and God. <laughs> oh, let's love on him a little while. Oh, let's love on him a little while. When Paul and Silas were in jail, we always talk about that midnight they sang praises. Notice what they did first. They prayed. Then they sang. They prayed. Then they sang. Then they prayed. Then they sang. They prayed. I'm going to tell you, the singing was great, but it was the praying that opened up the doors. The singing was because I believed what I was praying. Are you with me now? This is the effectual, fervent prayer in Jesus' name. Let's get ready to go home, but let's love on the Lord for a minute. Can you imagine? you got two beautiful kids. You do. Y'all may have 20 more. Who knows? I hadn't prayed about it. Are you? Okay. <laughs> you praying and they don't have to go through what maybe you had to go through because you prayed over them and you can live in such a way that you believe in your praying that their destiny is in your praying for them amen Gus I love Gus I'm telling you Gus and Jennifer They've been a blessing at this church. But I think he'd just soon shoot his boys way back in the day. But he saw, look what the Lord has done. I want you to say that again. Look what the Lord has done. Somewhere in a bunch of places, there was some praying over these young men. And look at them now. Your destiny has been prayed over. You don't even have to figure it out. It's just already there. You don't have to seek what we're going to do. It's already there. All you've got to do is step in it. Let's give God a crazy praise. I'm going to tell you too. I'm going to tell you too. Same thing for you. Same. I know you're seeking I know you're inquiring. I know you've gotten hungry, 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 hungry. And I don't know if he told you, I came into his office and I said, you're going to be the beginning of generation in Jesus' name. Because it's in him to do it. You hear me? This, these parents to you, you're going to have a better opportunity because they're going to pray it over you. You hear me? You believe it? I think you ought to smooch them all the time. You know what smooch is? Okay. <laughs> Let's give the Lord a crazy praise. I'm telling you, it works. I'm telling you, it works. How many of y'all believe it with me in the name of Jesus? When I sit down with your husband one night in there, I tried to tell him, sir, he, he listening to me. But did not know because of you we've been praying over him setting up some kind of an opportunity that he would bypass this but we're still praying you hear me we're setting we're setting it up 
in Jesus' name. The most powerful thing you can do is pray for somebody. Believing and saying. Let's praise him one more time in Jesus' name. Pray it and say it. Pray it and say it. Let me believe your prayers are working. Don't try to look for it. Just believe it. Believing is not looking at it. Believing is looking at Jesus. In Jesus' name. Lord, bless these beautiful people. Oh. Lord, I, I'm just telling them what you say in your word. I don't have nothing on my own. I just use you. And I thank you. The effectual fervent prayer of righteous people make a whole lot of power available. And everybody said amen. Well, how many glad you came? Amen. Tell somebody you love them. Tell them you appreciate them. And we're praying over each other in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, we got you covered in prayer in Jesus' mighty name. I love you. I'll see you later, sweet potato.